Well, hello everybody out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, let's pull up the screen here. Ah, Mighty Eyeless. Mighty Isis. My powers of war, which are exceptionally strong. That's right, Mighty Isis. We're going to talk about the up list uh, appears to be coming and also the spinoff, which will be combined. And we're going to talk about uh, last quarter's earnings. We're going to get into that. We're going to talk all things Eyeless or Mighty Eyeless. All right, so right here you can see they did uh, $3 million in this. Now, this is just a brief overview. We'll get into the hard numbers here in just a second. But uh, this is nice visual uh, conception here. It shows you where quarter over quarter they were up uh, quite a bit from 500000 to $3 million. And then uh, their assets, of course, went up. And here's where you can see their most recent acquisitions in Q1. Uh, Bullhead down in uh, Kodak, Tennessee. The drones, the Curve uh, XR, and then, of course, Georgia Fire and Rescue, which, which is a large supplier of uh, fire and safety. Here you can see their uh, balance sheet of 34 million, current liabilities of 15 million, so they're in good shape on that. Uh, their gross profit was nice, but the important part's net profit. They did have another profit this quarter, which is, uh, that's real good. Again, this is a penny stock, but it is profitable, so that's very, very important. Now, now we're gonna talk about why the revenue is 3 million, even though last quarter was higher. And before everybody panics over that, oh no, their revenues are going down, don't panic. <laughs> That's right. Don't panic. We're going to talk about why the numbers are actually down. Let me show you the chart on that. And I put this in a chart so it'd just be super easy to see. But this is Eyeless's revenue the first four quarters of last year. And as you can see, it was going straight up. Now it pulled back. Normally that would be bad. But like I said, we're going to get into why that is. All right. So they recently filed its disclosure for the first quarter of 2022. It says due to an ongoing audit, which is nearly completed, and the alignment of companies within its key subsidiary, which is the ERT, which is Emergency Response Technologies, ILIS did not include revenue from its first quarter acquisitions. Despite this, ILIS still reported a strong increase in revenue, and its balance sheet for Q1 is, you know, obviously looks real good. So obviously, because of the auditing and possibly because of this uh, spinoff, they are not showing that revenue from that first quarter of those new acquisitions. And they still did $3 million, which, like I say, year over year is fantastic, 482% up. Company imported a 73% increase in its balance sheet to $34 million. And then it talks about its gross profit and all that. And let's take a look at that net income uh, on a chart. Just makes it easier. All right, so here's their net income. First quarter was 264, and you can see it kind of went up and down a little bit. Then it went up, hit a nice little 944K. But again, that was on obviously higher revenues. And this number is probably higher than this, the 636, because we don't obviously have that first quarter of their uh, most recent acquisitions. But again, a very nice profitable uh, quarter with $600,000 on $3 million in revenue. That's 20% uh, net profit. So, you know, they've been averaging a little over 15%. Uh, so I'm very comfortable at $600,000 on $3 million, uh, revenue. That's actually great. And that's one of the reasons I like this company. Fire and safety is a very profitable uh, sector. Because remember, when it comes to fire and safety, you must have it. There's not a ton of people in that sector because it requires a lot of expertise and there's a lot of liability involved in it. But you must have it to have a public building of any kind or to operate in any way with the uh, government looking over your shoulder. So all of that has to be done. So it's, um, it's um, they're almost like the power company. You have to have them. So it's not like, you know, they have any risk of, of the sector crashing or anything like that, because it really, it just can't, you know, unless the world crashes, it's well, even if the world crashes, it doesn't crash. So I like this sector. And speaking of the world crashing, the market's been terrible. The inflation is completely out of control. It's over 8%. And I don't see it, you know, it's probably peaking. And I don't agree with that number, that 8%. I think it's about 12 to 15. I've said that for a while. Gas prices, they're not coming down anytime. We're going into the summer months, so it's only going to get worse. And, you know, this inflation, is it's going to be around for a while. And what that's going to do is very simple. You're not going to be able to pass all that inflation on to the consumer. You're not going to be able to do that. At, for example, Walmart and Target. What they've had to do is eat some of that because they've got higher payroll, they've got higher shipping costs, and higher cost of goods sold. So they can raise some of it, but not all of it, because remember, Walmart's a low price leader. So what happens is it shrinks their profits. 
And that's why Walmart went from $140 down to $110 or $120 because they got hammered as far as their earnings. You know, now their PE ratio doesn't look quite as good. So that's just a, a real problem, and I don't see a real good solution. And, you know, the government's telling us all everything's fine and it's all good, and, uh, you know, we don't need to be worrying about a, a recession, which I think we're already in. But um, here's a government representative uh, explaining how everything's going to be fine. There's no, and there's not going to be a recession. All right, I'm going to level with you all. There's no reason to panic. But the other two pilots are just fine. They're at the controls flying the plane. That's right. Everything's going to be just fine. <laughs> so it's, I don't believe a word that comes out of any of them talking about, oh, we may, may not go in. We're in a recession already. We're there. You know, it's just, uh, just a matter of technically checking off a few more boxes, and that's, it'll be obvious. You never know you're in one until afterwards anyway. And here it says, ILIS confirmed that it's in the process of completing its audit for 2021. It's been aligning companies when it, within its group for a potential uplist of its subsidiary, ERT. Just remember ERT to a major stock exchange, probably NASDAQ. As a result, the company was not able to include figures for its acquisitions completed during the first quarter, and these figures will be consolidated into future disclosures. The company is confident that when factoring in its recently completed acquisitions and several more, it should add substantial revenue and exceed its run rate forecast for 2022, which is pretty darn high. And J.P. Backwell said, with our revenue up, balance sheet up, profit up, and cash increased, we are pleased with our quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth. Said, we are happy with our audit and subsidiary progress, which will lend itself to the achievement of far more significant milestones. And it says, our emergency response subsidiary is making excellent progress because we have prioritized longer-term business growth, excited about what now lies ahead, and so on and so forth. And somebody said some crap. You know, that's, that's pretty typical uh, corporate stuff, but it, it looks really good. And I'm going to have to agree with JP Backwell on that. Now we're going to talk about Uplist. And actually, Nick Link just did a video. And I'm going to cut to the chase and kind of get you that one-minute clip in there where he really discusses it. Regarding the much-discussed potential Uplist or potential spin-out, as I think a lot of people have been discussing over the last, you know, I don't know, six, nine months, you know, we are very well on, on track with our bigger-term business plans. And they'll become pretty clear to everybody in the coming weeks. We are a little bit, a little bit behind, you know, where we would like to have been, um, but that probably, for, for a number of reasons, the, ma the main was a positive reason for ILIS, um, is that we were able to get fully audited. So that was a fundamental step forward for us in, in the ILIS core business, not the ERT business, because that potentially speeds up everything in ILUS that we will be able to be fully reporting very, very soon. Um, the audit is more or less finished, a couple of last little snags, but we would anticipate them being finished either this week or next week, and then we can go through the formalities for ILIS to become a fully reporting business, which I think will be very important to the company, important to you guys as shareholders, certainly be important to, you know, to start to, let's say, fight back against the short sellers, um, you know, and I think that'll all be useful, and it'll also be very useful in terms of the quality of capital we can rise going forward. That's in the ILUS business. You know, so obviously we needed to get that order done and decided that it made sense for us to, let's say, delay or, you know, ro roll out our bigger plans, you know, push them forward a month or two while we were getting that order done. So regard regarding the bigger plans, you know, we've appointed the attorneys, we're in the final stages, stages of the engagement um, with, with the investment banks, and, you know, all those information and those details will start to come pretty soon. Um, so we, you know, we're pretty sure we can't say too much, as you know, um, but we're pretty sure that you know you'll be very satisfied with with what we're about to offer you. All right. So there, he can't say a whole lot about the uplisting, but it sounds like they're well on their way. They they did hire a law firm that that's what their specialty is is uplisting. So you know, between the auditing, hiring of the law firm, a lot of things are going at a good pace. Which, given everything they've had to do with the Rony Rona, I'm shocked at their progress. And I understand they're not doing it as fast as some of us would like. But I think it's pretty remarkable what they've been able to pull off during a, you know, a really difficult period of time and all the acquisitions that they've made. So it's been pretty outstanding, really. And I'll just quickly go over these uh, little statements and assertions they made. I, I go over this pretty much every time. We know about the European deal. They've already done first phase. The share reduction they're still working on. He's spoken to that. They're trying to get close to 1 billion shares. I think they're currently at 1.22 based on what J.P. Backwell has uh, affirmed. I wish that was sitting on the OTC markets uh, so we'd know the exact number, 
but it sounds like with that audit going on, they're getting pretty close, but that is annoying the crap out of me, and I've said that in every video. Of course, they're working on all their acquisitions. They do have a nine-figure acquisition they're working on in the U.S. that would really kind of change the game. That may be part of this spinoff. We'll see. We know about the uplisting in three to six months. It's probably two to five now with no reverse split. Very important. They use their preferred and restricted shares in some of the acquisitions, but mainly, mainly it's, a, it's cash is my understanding. Water mist technology, we've talked a lot about that. Uh, so I've had some discussions with Tesla. I don't know how far along that's really gone. The Vera drones, which could be huge at one point. But uh, like I said, I could sit here and go over this all day, and this list could be much, much longer, but I would bore the crap out of you. There's some pretty good D&D &D online if you want to check that out. Occasionally you'll see it on Stock Twitch. Some people have done some work on that. And uh, there's so much going on that it's really hard to list it all, honestly. All right, so now we're going to take a look at what the stock price is doing. We're sitting down here at $0.10, cents, and there is support right there at that price. Um, it sat above this 11 and a half. I bought a little bit here at 11 and a half. And I said, if it dropped down here to this 10 cents, I would pick some more up. And I actually just above 10 cents today, I put it in order and it got filled. I think it was like a 10.3 or so, but there is support on that 10 cents. So right in that area is a pretty good place to pick up. We talked about the fact it might very well go through 11 and a half. So I only bought a little bit there and I bought some more today and don't, well, it could go below 10. Good grief. Anything can do anything right now. But um, like I said, that's pretty strong support. It goes back a pretty good ways. Let's see. Yeah, it goes way back to here. So, I mean, that's darn near a year ago. So, like I said, this is a pretty good entry point um, as far as I'm concerned. Market cap of around $120 million or so. So, like I say, given... <laughs> You know, given their profit margins and how much money they made last year, that's a pretty high P.E. ratio, probably around 60. Now, their forward P.E. is going to be much lower than that. You know, we may be getting into value stock territory probably within the next 12 months on this thing. But, you know, if the market cap goes up, that's a little different animal. How this spinoff is all going to play out is also going to play a role in that. And we'll find out more and more about that. But this is a pretty exciting stock all the way across the board. Now, there's going to be a lot of short volume Hit, hitting this stock because it's pretty volatile and a lot of eyeballs are on it. But, you know, a lot of those are day traders. Let's see what they're doing. Okay, yeah, 44%. Been as high as 54 the day before. So, yeah, we're dealing with some short volume. They're playing this stock pretty hard. So it's probably going to pop up and down. Um, like I say, the day traders like to mess with this stock because it does have a lot of people watching it. It's been the hottest stock in the penny stock uh, universe. So you're going to have a lot of uh, people playing this thing both ways. So, like I say, don't be surprised if you've got some uh, negative volatility with the shorts uh, popping in there. You know, they're trying to take advantage of a really bad market. You know, that's what they do. So, while I think this is a pretty good opportunity, like I said, I practice that 10% rule. I don't let my penny stocks get above 10% in my portfolio, and I'm actually below 10% right now because, let's face it, if, if you've had any penny stocks, you've gotten your butt kicked in the last several months. Penny stocks a year and a half ago were the hottest thing in the world. Now they're, they just gotten crushed. But now everything's getting crushed. Fang's getting crushed. Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, everything's gotten hammered or at least had the crap knocked out of it. So now even the strongest ones are getting nailed. That's probably where we're going to start getting to the end of it. Once everything's been hammered, at some point it'll start going back up. And usually what goes up first are the things that went down first. Hopefully the penny stocks will start improving some and some of these high growth stocks. So Alice is really the only penny stock I've been buying recently, and I haven't been buying a ton of it, but like I said, I am increasing my position because I'm pretty comfortable with it. It's the one that is making a profit and they're growing at a heck of a clip and looks like they're going to be uplisting. So I like all of that. Message. All right, folks, and that's Alice today, Mighty Alice, and a little update talking about uplist and spinoffs and, you know, going over the charts and talking about all things Alice. And if you like this uh, content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's me know to continue to cover Alice. And if you haven't subscribed, well, what you waiting for? Do it. <laughs> anyway. Well, anyway, I hope you did like the content. And we'll see you next time on Mr. Frugal Investor.